Is there anything that can take this market down, even with a surge in COVID? We continue to march higher. You're absolutely right. And I think of the three things that you mentioned, I think the last item, which is the scorecard, the GDP for Q4, is really going to be where all eyes are going to be, um, even given the, the number of earnings uh, results that we're going to get this year, I mean, this week. And so the reason I say the GDP is important is because we are going to likely see continuing acceleration, but uh, a slowdown. So we're recovering, but we're recovering at a much slower pace. In fact, there were a number of troubling indicators um, in December um, that basically showed us going into negative payrolls for the first time since April, slowing in consumption, um, and a number of items that we have to keep an eye on uh, because I do think that, that that is the one thing that could spook the markets. What, what's, Gina, is the biggest worry that you have? We know that the markets are not the economy and the economy, not the markets. But there's a huge disconnect and one that's been looking like it's been widening since the virus pandemic lows. What's the biggest disconnect between the markets right now and what the economy could be telling us? Well, the markets continue to price as though the pandemic is going to be, number one, temporary, and number two, still fairly quick, even at this sort of intermediate 18-month kind of time span. And if we start to see continued slowdowns, if we have any trouble rolling out with the vaccine, the markets just are not priced for that. They're priced for us to smoothly get through the next six months and start to reopen. If we're not reopening by the summertime, the markets, I don't think, are really kind of priced to, to continue to bear the, the multiples that they continue to bear because we've seen earnings numbers drop. Even though we've, we've seen them do reasonably well and they've beat expectations, they've still dropped dramatically. Um, but multiples have not changed dramatically. In fact, in many cases, multiples have continued to expand as though this is all going to be a bad dream. And we have yet to get beyond pre-pandemic economic levels. All right. We, we know that the folks in Washington, D.C., on the congressional side, are working towards getting a massive fiscal stimulus done. We know that the policymakers out of the Federal Reserve will keep monetary policy accommodative for the near and probably long-term future. With all that being said, are there still opportunities in the marketplace to be long in this environment if we know that all the positivity is already going to be there? Well, look, just because the markets are extremely overpriced doesn't mean that everything's overpriced equally. In fact, there are a lot of opportunities still floating around. Um, but this is going to be a stock picker's year. In fact, if you look at most expectations uh, for the S&P for the year, they're largely expecting flat to up to two, up 2% two uh, for the markets. However, I think that that is going to portend a lot of volatility, and it's also going to be a very much a stock picker's market this year. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.